Hi guys, my name is Mr. Lead, and today we're going to look more at the topic of plate tectonics. Last time we looked uh, at uh, some of the people who discovered plate tectonics, we looked at Wergner and Hess, and Hess was the one who discovered that uh, the sea, that at certain points the seafloor is spreading apart. But uh, what we didn't talk about was uh, why this uh, the seafloor is spreading apart. Why is it that these plates are moving, and how is it that these plates move? And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So, firstly, the question of why it is that plates move. Now. To understand this, you first have to understand the structure of the Earth. The Earth is made up of different uh, layers. Um, we have the inner core, that's the part that is uh, molten iron, uh, and that's the part that gives us our magnetic field. The next layer is the outer core, um, which is also made of molten metal. Uh, then we have the mantle, um, and the mantle is uh, also just made up of uh, molten rock, mostly. Um, and the, uh, the upper part of the mantle is uh, the asthenosphere. Uh, and uh, then we have the crust, uh, which uh, makes up part of the lithosphere. Um, now, the part that moves, it, it, the part that the tectonic plates are made of, is the crust. Uh, the crust is the part uh, which, uh, which moves. Uh, you, might be, you might be wondering, um, how is it that uh, we know that the Earth is made up of all this if we ha aren't able to dig our way down? And the answer is, you know what? We don't know this for sure. Um, there are some things uh, that make us assume that this is the most likely um, uh, composition of the Earth's uh, center, uh, including looking at what uh, old planets were, used to be made of. And we're also able to um, uh, we're also able to uh, shoot radio signals down through the Earth. Uh, to determine the composition of the Earth. But ultimately, we don't know this structure for certain. But if we are to assume the, that the Earth is made up in this way, um, we can assume uh, that, that the Earth could, the plates could be moving for one of two different reasons. There are two different theories. The first theory is probably the most accepted theory, and that is uh, that plates move due to convection currents. So inside the mantle, uh, that's uh, all molten magma, uh, the uh, molten magma and, hot, and what you notice with hot material, hot material convects. And, and that means that it uh, heat is constantly rising and constantly churning up uh, the, uh, the liquid. And so as this mantle and as the magma is constantly churning around, that churning is, is causing the crust to move. Um, so that's the most uh, commonly accepted theory. The second uh, theory is that gravity is causing these plates to move. And, and that gravity is pu pulling certain plates down, which means uh, that uh, hot magma has to rise to fill in the gaps. Um, and as well as uh, gravity, these slabs are basically pulling each other down. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that, those are the two theories. Uh, we have convection that is causing uh, the slabs to move, or gravity, and, and which is causing uh, slabs to pull down and pull each other and down along along with it. Um, so we don't know exactly for sure how plates move, but here are some things uh, that we do know. There are two main types of crusts. Okay, there's two main types of crust, uh, and this is really key information. Um, we have ocean crust, oceanic crust, and continental crust. Um, I think this should be fairly obvious of, uh, as to what uh, oceanic and continental crust is. Oceanic uh, crust you'll find in the ocean, continental crust you'll find on land. Um, oceanic crust is a lot more dense. Uh, remember, dense uh, uh, means that uh, it has, has proportionally a higher volume and mass. Um, and oceanic crust is also thinner um, and contains heavier elements, uh, whereas continental cr crust is thicker but less dense. Um, so, we, we know that uh, there are two types of crust. We also know that there are three main types of plate movement, and this is also really key information. Uh, we have uh, plates that can diverge from each other, plates that transform along each other, and plates that converge in on each other. All right, now we're going to look at each of these three plate movements uh, in, in a bit more detail in a moment. Uh, but first, I actually want to show you a map of uh, all the different plates on the Earth. These are the, all the different plates. Um, so we have some plates that are a lot bigger than others. Um, so for example, the Pacific plate 
is uh, definitely the big one of the biggest plates uh, uh, on Earth. We've also got the Eurasian plate and the African plate and the North American plate. Those are also really big. Um, and then we've also got uh, the Australian plate and the South American plate, which is also uh, about the same size as each other. Um, and you'll see that each of these plates are made up of uh, either portions of continental crust and oceanic crust, or some are made up of entirely, say, the Cocos Plate here, they're entirely oceanic crust. Um, and so, yeah, these plates have uh, originated and they started off in one position, but they all moved uh, away from each other into different places. So Hess noticed that some, some sections were diverging from each other, uh, like we're seeing here. Um, but that's not the only way that plates move. If, if a plate, two plates are diverging from each other, one plate, each of these plates are going to converge or transform against other plates around them. So let's look at, uh, once again, the three ways that plates can move. The first way is diverging boundaries. So this is the one we discussed in the last lesson. This is the one that Hess uh, fo focus mainly on. Diverging plates is when we have two plates that are moving away from each other. And what that causes is it causes a gap, uh, a ridge or a rift, depending on uh, if it's two continents or two uh, oceanic plates. Uh, it will cause a ridge or a rift where uh, new magma rises to take its place. Uh, if we're seeing two continental plates move apart from each other, often we're going to see that, that gap uh, not only fill with magma and new rock, but we're also seeing it filled uh, filled with water. Um, I'm going to represent uh, each of these different plate movements with this orange here. Say that this orange is the Earth and that the peel is the crust. Right now, this isn't a really good representation of the Earth because all this peel is all together. It's all stuck together. Uh, give me a moment as I take apart this peel. There we go. That's more accurate to what the Earth looks like. Okay, so remember, diverging plates, that's where you see two boundaries. Uh, if I can do boundaries that diverge away from each other like that, they diverge. Okay, cool. Um, now, the next type uh, is converging boundaries. Now, this is the most complicated type because, remember, there are two different types of crust we talked about. There's oceanic crust and continental crust. And this is where these types of crust actually come into uh, be really important factors um, because... Whether or not you have, uh, whether or not these converging boundaries are two continental crusts, or two uh, or two oceanic crusts, or a continental and an oceanic crust, they're gonna react, uh, converge in different ways. So remember, converging uh, converging boundaries uh, come close together. So if I was to represent that with the orange here, you you get here we go. You get two converging boundaries that come together, one is going to go over the other, okay? So one is going to uh, come on top of the other. But the question is, how do we know which uh, plate is going to go on top of the other? Which plate is going to sink and which plate is going to go uh, over? And the answer to that is to do with the density of the plates. So the plate that is more dense is going to go underneath the plate that is less dense. So, oceanic plate versus continental plate. Which one was more dense? That's right, the oceanic plate is more dense. It's thinner, but it's more dense. So that means this plate is going to subduct. Uh, and so what we call, we call this a subduction zone. And normally what happens here is we see uh, in this crack, um, uh, what, happens, um, uh, what, what happens is all the, the continental plate is still moving up and all, all this continent is getting pushed all together and it forms a mountain range. Uh, so you can actually see this in uh, on the coast of uh, the Americas. Um, on Chile, in Chile, you see lots and lots of mountains and then just ocean. That's because uh, those mountains have all been uh, colliding and, and rising up as it's been converging in with an ocean plate. Um, the second type is ocean versus ocean. Uh, if, if they're both oceanic, how do we know which one would, uh, which one will subduct? It's always going to be the one that's more dense. We don't know whether, uh, like, because they're both oceanic, we have to actually measure the densities of both the plates to, to know which one's more dense. Um, but what will happen here is, again, we're going to see a, a, conver a um, one, one plate is going to uh, converge up and uh, 
cause a mountain range and we'll see um, some high mountain systems and we'll probably see a few volcanoes as well. Um, as, uh, and these are called island arcs. Uh, this is swapped around the wrong way. Wait, give me. So for example, in Japan, and we see uh, a lot of island arcs that have formed because of two oceanic plates that are pushed together. And just in this gap here, we see a lot of magma trying to squeeze out and rise up. And that's where we also get a lot of volcanoes, as you see in Japan. And the last one is when you have two continents crashing into each other. And once again, the one that's more dense is going to converge, while the other one is going to uh, is going to also converge, but uh, be crumpled up, uh, up and form mountains. Okay. So if I was to represent this with my orange, here we go. I'm going to start with ocean versus ocean. They're converging in on each other. And well, look at that. One of them is going on top of the other. So this one was more dense. This one's less dense and it's created a uh, mountain range. And these mountains are going to stick up and become islands. All right, now let's see what happens when we have uh, ocean versus uh, continent. Uh, when, when they converge in on each other, let's see what happens. And, oh, there, there we go. Uh, the continent goes on top, the ocean subducts. Uh, and so we're seeing another mountain range being formed, just like the one in Chile. Okay, so that's converging boundaries. We have three different types of converging boundaries. The last type of boundary uh, hang on, transform boundaries. This is where you just have two boundaries that are moving uh, side by side. They're moving in different directions along each other. Um, and so uh, because of this, uh, they are often held together just because of friction. Uh, and, and sometimes when they do move, they'll slip and that will cause an earthquake. Um, so these cracks uh, are known as fault lines. Um, and a very famous transform boundary is the one in San Andreas uh, in, in California. California. Um, here we have two plates that are, are heading in different directions. Uh, we can actually see a fault line here. And in, if you live in San Andreas, uh, or if you've seen the, the movie, you'll know that if you live there, you've got to be used to uh, see, feeling earthquakes all the time because these two trans, uh, transform boundaries slip all the time. Um, eventually, we're going to see what, uh, San Andreas actually uh, be separated from America entirely and create an entirely new island. Um, but that's not going to happen for a very long time because the rate at which these plates move, and we know this for a fact because we can uh, measure it with satellites, the rate at which these plates move is about three to five centimeters a year. That's not much. It, it, plates move at the rate that your fingernails grow. Uh, it's really slow, uh, but uh, they are moving. We do know that. And they move in three different ways. So remember, there's three different ways that plates can move, transform, converge, and diverge. And they uh, move in different ways depending on the densities of their crust. Thanks for watching, guys.